Hey, how's it going guys? It's Eric and welcome back to another Destiny video. Now in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my recommendations for what you should run within Trials of Osiris. That being weapons, perks, armor, as well as classes as a whole. Now I will preface this video by saying it is a personal preference what you guys run. I'm just showing you guys what the majority of people will be running within Trials of Osiris. So if you guys are good on let's say a blade dancer run a blade dancer do what you guys think will be the best for you and your team in order to go flawless but like i said i'm showing you guys what the majority of people will be running within trials of osiris now the first thing we're going to look at here is the hunter then we'll look at the titan and then we'll look at the warlock so one thing you want to do when actually building a good loadout is have gear pieces that are going to be generalized towards your weapon loadout. So for this we have the Graviton Forfeit and the reason why I use this is because the exotic perk that you get it actually already has Shade Step so in your perk tree you do not need to rock Shade Step. This helmet does that for you and you can use a different perk so that's why I want to run that within Trials. Now as far as your gauntlets go, as far as chest armor and leg armor, you're going to want to run something generally, I guess, leaning towards your weapons. So for this instance, these gauntlets, when they're leveled up obviously, will have an increased reload speed with the sniper, so that is a great thing to have. And then for this, it's auto rifle, but you know, auto rifles right now are kind of non-existent and that's just because it's a pulse rifle meta so definitely use the pulse rifles but we will be getting into that shortly now as far as the wing sun legs go this is from i believe going eight and oh in trials of osiris and the perk on it which is basically increased agility when you're the last guardian standing as well as shotgun ammo does kind of come in handy especially obviously if you want to run a shotgun but predominantly what you're going to be running into is sniper rifles. So let's get into the perk tree now. And what I would recommend for you guys is either the Night Stalker subclass or the Gunslinger subclass. And that's just for the simple fact, Gunslingers can take out things very, very easily. But then Night Stalkers are very good with tethering all the enemies together. So if they like to kind of bunch up, one bow and arrow will actually take out the entire team. And if you guys end up tethering them, they can't really move that well, so you might want to use that. So, me personally, I run the Night Stalker, and then if I really want to, I guess, go quote-unquote tryhard, I'll put on the Gunslinger. But as far as the perks go, we have the Spike Grenade, because in, in kind of necessity, it's like the Lightning Grenade with a Titan. It's just not as powerful, I suppose, but it's still a very viable option. Then we have Triple Jump, and then Black Hole. Now, I don't like to use Quiver because... I'm, I'm just kind of iffy on that, and I don't really want to hit the people that I'm shooting the bow at. I just want to tether them together so they won't be able to run. That way, if my teammate's close by them, easy way to pick them off. And basically, this makes it last, I think, twice as long, so definitely a good option there. The smoke bomb, you want kind of a toxin to it, so really good right there. And especially if someone's weak and you don't have a grenade, you can just whip your smoke bomb over there and they'll die. Path Unknown, I like having a little bit of recovery because being able to regen health really quickly within Trials is kind of beneficial. And then Courage of the Pack, just simply for the fact that if you get a kill with the Night Stalker, it's going to help out your allies that are around you. And then we have Way of the Fearless and then Keen Scout. Now you might be thinking this is more of a PvE perk, but when you hit somebody with either a bullet or let's say a smoke bomb, it's going to mark them on the map for you with a kind of hit marker type setting if you guys are familiar with Call of Duty. So definitely a viable option there. And as far as the golden gun is concerned, we're going to look at this real quick. It's basically the same thing except obviously with the golden gun. So you guys, if you want, just go ahead, kind of study the skill tree here for a minute and try to replicate what I am doing. Alright guys, so now what we're going to be looking at is the weapons, and like I said earlier, it's a pulse rifle meta. Now what that means, pulse rifles dominate Crucible right now. 
So you're going to want to obviously use the best weapons that you're going to do well with. So in this instance, I recommend either the Red Death, the Bad Juju, or the Hawksaw. And these three weapons are going to be the things that you run into the most within Trials as well as Crucible as a whole. So might as well use them while they're good because I kind of sense a nerf is going to be coming here shortly. Also, you're going to want a high impact sniper rifle. And I would honestly recommend either this one right here, the Thousand Yard Stare. Best sniper in the game right now in my personal opinion. And then it also is able to snipe through the revive. And once you get the shield, all you have to do is get a headshot. They'll die instantly. And then the Irian, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Same exact thing. It can shoot through the revive and the roll I have on it is really insane. I have luck in the chamber, injection mold and zen moment so like I said make sure your gear is kind of corresponding to your weapon loadout now what I would recommend I have the machine gun on right now but heavy rounds kind of don't matter to me personally it's either an instant win or an automatic loss depending on how the tilt in, um, in the game's going so I'd recommend the rocket launcher and the one I have right here heavy payload grenades and horseshoes and javelin so really good perk loadout right there and this is honestly what I would tell you to run in any situation so with that being said we're gonna hop onto the Titan and then we're gonna go on to the warlock and the weapons are gonna be universal so use the same weapons on all three of your characters alright so next up we're gonna be looking at the Titan now the majority of people that I've ran into actually run the Sunbreaker but I have seen quite a few people use the Defender subclass as well. So we're going to look at the gear and then we're going to take a look at specifics when it comes to the class. Now, the Darkblade Helm, really nothing too special. It just has a really good intellect role in my opinion and that's why I use it. And plus, I, I mean, look at it. It just, it looks badass. So next we have the Immolation Fist. And these are very good, especially because of the explosive pyre that it comes with. And my roll had increased melee speed as well as increased reload with shotgun. So I, if like let's say I want to end up running the Immobius, that's going to help out a lot. Next my chest piece, it increases the amount of pulse rifle ammo that I can carry. So with pulse rifles being dominant in Crucible, really good and basically my first option when it comes to chest armor. And finally we have my boots where basically heavy rounds, I get more heavy. So, really good there. So, what we're gonna look at now is the Sunbreaker itself. So first up, we have the Incendiary Grenade. And basically, this has a pretty good hit damage when it actually hits somebody dead on. And also, if they manage to somehow live, it burns them. So either they're gonna die from getting hit by the grenade, or they're gonna die from burn damage. Next up, Increased Control, that's kind of self-explanatory, and then Forge Master. You're going to be throwing more hammers, and they're also going to have a bigger explosion and blast radius, so really good right there. Melting Point, if somebody has a shield, that's going to take it down, and it's basically just a couple of bullet kills afterwards, if that makes sense. And then Titan Codex, it kind of helps out with the recovery aspect again, and then Flame Seeker. This is going to be your best friend because it's basically like a heat seeker. So definitely rock that. Titan Codex again. And then, wow, that kind of looks like a pile of shit. Anyways, and then we have Cauterize or Caterize, whatever you want to call it. Basically, when you get a kill with your hammer, it's going to regenerate your health. So if you're taking damage within your Hammer of Soul, that is also going to be your best friend. Now, when we go to the Defender subclass, what I'd like to do is switch off for the Helm of Saint-14, which I'm actually ranking up again. And then I'll put on these gauntlets, and really nothing changes except for just the different perk roll. So that's that. But anyways, for the Defender, I recommend the Suppressor Grenade. Now, if you're very good with this class, these grenades will indeed be your best friend. This will stop any super except for another Defender Bubble. So. Use that and you won't be getting killed by a super anytime soon if the grenade hits them. We also have increased control again and then for the bubble we have the blessing of light and that basically gives you a shield when you run through the bubble. So really good for trials especially because 
any armor and any extra armor is kind of a blessing, no pun intended. And then we have War Machine, really good if you get a melee kill, just because, let's say, you're out of ammo, then you can extensively and quickly reload your weapon, so good option right there. Then we have Relentless, and this is actually going to have a better, I guess, overall to the Force Barrier, and it's also going to have you, I guess, have a little bit of a shield for a little bit longer. And then finally we have Illuminated, and then that's going to be basically an extension of the bubble, especially if you're running Blessing or Weapons of Light, those effects are going to go a little bit longer. So now, let's go into the Warlock. Now honestly, I don't see too many Warlocks within Crucible anymore, but when I do, it is self-resing ones. Now, as far as my weapons are concerned, and as far as my gear is concerned, to me that doesn't really matter. I don't like playing Crucible on a Warlock. That's just me personally, I don't care for the class as a whole. But like I said, what I predominantly run into is self-resing Warlocks. Now, these two kind of don't matter because they're not used. These are more of PvE classes in my opinion. So let's take a look at what we have here. Now as far as the grenade is concerned, fusion grenades. Those things are way too good and personally I think that Bungie needs to kind of do something about that because the attachment radius and what I mean by that is fusion grenades, you can throw them out, you can throw them basically like a couple of feet to the right or to the left of somebody and it'll automatically attach to them so they need to do something about that but definitely rock those while you can next we have the balance glide that just gives you overall better control as well as i guess a boost and then we have fireborn obviously self-resing and then we have flame shield if you get into a close quarter engagement this thing is going to be your best friend you will not be able to get beat especially when you have that shield up in a close quarter engagement. Arcane Spirit really doesn't matter here. Viking Funeral. Again, if you hit them with Scorch or if you hit them with a grenade, this will actually kind of burn them over time. It doesn't do too much damage, but let's say if you get a guy extremely one shot, this will do the job if you can manage to barely hit him with a grenade. Then we have Divine Order, really doesn't matter there. And then we have Gift of the Sun, which gives you an additional grenade. So, let's say if you had something like, I don't know, a Heart of the Praxic Fire, I believe, or the Starfire Protocol, where you get an extra grenade, you can just run this perk. You don't have to worry about wasting your exotic slot on that. So, anyways, if you guys did enjoy it, let me know. Leave a comment down below or a like on the video. That would be, be uh, very much appreciated, actually. And... That would help the video get out there and it would help the channel grow. If you guys enjoy daily Destiny content and want to see more, hit that subscribe button today. And if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, it'll be down in the description below. So anyways, I hope this video helps you go flawless or at least do well in Trials and Crucible as a whole. And if it does, come back to the video and let me know. But anyways, thank you all for watching and I will talk to you all in tomorrow's video. See you guys.